While we've been speaking here, John's Queen has been addressing the Parliament in the United Kingdom. Now, I haven't been able to watch CNN for the last five minutes, but I can tell you that uh, our analysts, are, I'm sure, going over that speech with a fine tooth comb to see if there's any hint about the future of Brexit. So the question, and I don't want to bring up Brexit in the Middle East, but Trump plays into Brexit. He encouraged Brexit. He promised, or at least he indicated, that the United States would be willing to make up the uh, trade deficit that it might be uh, after trade breaks off with Europe uh, with the United States, and the United States would make up. Do you have any confidence, John, in that well, that would happen? Well, I, I don't want to talk about Brexit either. And uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't think Trump had any influence on the Brexit referendum at all. Mm. The original sin was David Cameron's, uh, and the fault was the British electorates. Mm. Uh, and you can't, you may look for scapegoats, you may want to blame Trump, but he's been a sort of uh, 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 firing up some of the rhetoric, but you can't blame Trump for, uh, uh, but, for that. But, but can you, do you have any faith that the United States is going to make up any kind of trade shortfall that uh, Britain Absolutely experiences? Absolutely not. With? I mean, the, uh, what we're seeing with President Trump is a more nationalist leader. Um, and I take seriously his uh, basic slogans about make America great again. Um, mm. it's, a, it's a false slogan at one level, but it shows what his priorities are. He is not prepared to do what President Kennedy set out 60 years ago, which was that America would bear any burden and pay any price to defend freedom. Those words are absolutely meaningless to, uh, to uh, President Trump. President Trump wants to uh, create jobs for American workers, make uh, 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 America safe from uh, uh, what he would see as threatening migration, and he can let the rest of the world, um, you know, they can look after its own problems. I mean, I do think, I mean, I, just to go back to the central question about what is Trump's legacy, um, I think it's important, Jean-Claude picked up on this, um, he has been a president who has really helped American business, um, and he's created confidence in America. Uh, I think if Hillary Clinton had been elected, America would be peering down a recession at the moment because of the lack of investment in America, whereas his growth is falling, but will probably bottom at about 2% in the next, uh, next year or so. So uh, we shouldn't, uh, and all the you know, personal views that Joseph mentioned about Trump, I share entirely. Um, but he has done something about the American economy, which has re-boosted confidence in American growth, uh, which means that a recession is, uh, is at the very least pushed off uh, and delayed, and certainly is unlikely to happen next year. But oh. the... Why, why engage in trade war? I mean, I agree with that point yeah. completely. Why engage in trade war if we hear, well, we came to a draw here, and if I look at the statistics, yeah. the, the basic point about the trade war, which is to reduce your trade deficit, mm. has not happened. Well, it, it probably has in China, because I think the... No, no, the, the overall. Well, overall, it, 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 well, Trump has a very superficial view about trade, and we all know that. And it, it, when he rewrote NAFTA, and called it the US-Mexico-Canada agreement, the change in the dial was about two or three percent. It was basically NAFTA with a new name. Um, and uh, the substance has not changed uh, very much at all. This is Trump's style. Trump is aiming at domestic American politics rather than actually aiming to change the structure so, of the world. So I've got other I mean, points I want to make. Yeah, so We don't have to sure. take them seriously, right? Yeah. Sorry? We don't have to take them seriously. Well, you, you do have to take him seriously because he can act in a way which is very unthought through. And the, the sort of areas that uh, Renault was talking about, his uh, attitudes towards Iran, his um, uh, relationship with uh, autocrats like uh, uh, President Erdogan, uh, leads to consequences which he simply doesn't understand when he's having these conversations. Um, and uh, uh, those are consequential. I think actually I, I would side more with Jean-Claude saying he's a very consequential president and I would say it's more than the, it's, it's, it's the same. And the reason he's consequential, uh, my third word was damaging. I think his, uh, the damage isn't about individual policies. It's not about relationship with China. It's not about what happens in the Persian Gulf. His approach on deregulation has meant he's unable to do anything to contribute to the international efforts on climate change. He, d he barely believes climate change exists let alone that it's a problem that America has a responsibility to address. His um, uh, approach on uh, foreign relations 
uh, risks conflict, and he is largely responsible for what is happening in Syria at the moment. Although one has to say the original sin in Syria was President Obama's mm -hmm. for siding with a group on the ground yeah. which was aligned with a prescribed terrorist organization. Mm -hmm. That sowed the seeds of the problem, current problems with, uh, with Turkey. So it's not all Turkey's fault. Thirdly, the disdain for alliances means that other countries around the world, whether it's uh, uh, Britain, France, and Germany in Europe in our different positions, whether it's Japan and South Korea or Australia, or friends of America around the world, will simply not rely on America in the same way that they did before. They will have to balance those relationships, and they'll have to find, uh, they'll have to be more autonomous for their own defense and security. That may not be a bad thing, but it is a consequence of Trump. And then lastly Jim. is the damage to international institutions. Um, Trump doesn't believe in American institutions. He doesn't really believe <laughs> exactly. in the Congress or the Supreme Court or the freedom of the media uh, uh, as an individual. Obviously, his party believes in all those things. Um, but he certainly doesn't believe in international institutions uh, like the World Bank and the IMF or the International Trading System. So I think he's very consequential. I think a one-term Trump presidency will do this much damage. I think a two-term Trump presidency will do five times as much damage. Mm. Uh, and that's the risk that we face. Okay.